everybody. Todd Metal at Weatherman here. Happy fall to you all, by the way. It's hard to believe we are already here. Years gone by so fast. So, speaking of which, there's been a lot of craziness going on this year. And I actually wouldn't expect it to continue as we get into this season here. So, we've been talking about it for a while on here in the channel. And we especially talked about it in our most recent monthly outlook here. So the October outlook will be in the top right hand corner if you want to check that out later. But the thing to make note of here is it's no secret. We've been talking about the shift to a weak La Nina, anticipating it to start around this time. And we already have a 72% chance of that occurring. So confidence is pretty high. Now, how significant that is to our weather pattern is jet stream usually starts to make a pretty drastic change during the fall and the winter months you can actually see it on the screen here so the things to make note of here is it's a variable polar jet stream so basically it's like our northern jet stream we usually have two that we end up dealing with but the main jet stream we'll be dealing with during the fall and winter will be the polar jet so this is going to bring cold air to a lot more than northern states could be a little bit more active over towards the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley as well. And then we'll kind of have like an in-betweener zone right here over towards maybe the Ohio, Tennessee Valleys, maybe even into the southeast. Some parts of the south are going to end up being pretty much drier than average. Some areas warmer than average as well, with also the northwest getting pretty active as well. Um, now, I'm not going to make a snowfall forecast off of this because it's a little bit too variable. But in any case... I am very interested in seeing what lies ahead with this. You can kind of see a reflection of uh, what's going on here in both the seasonal outlooks here for temperatures and precipitation. You can see a good reflection of the drier air and also the above average temperatures over here being prevalent across the western half of the country. In particular, I think a lot of this is going to have to do with what happens over this next month. We have very high probabilities right now over the western half of the country for above average temperatures and some pretty significantly above average at that. In the outlook that we did on Friday, we actually were seeing the above average temperatures maybe even going 40 degrees above average at times on certain parts of the month of October, especially towards the early part. So i think this is a big part as to why even though it's a 90-day average the confidence is so high especially further off towards the south there are some pretty notable um, above average percentages over here towards florida and also towards the northeast but the confidence that isn't quite as high again i do think a lot of that's going to have to do with what happens in october towards november and december it's a little bit more of a wild card as we go further along here but some interesting things to make note of, and I always make mention of this in every outlook that I do. I always try to watch over towards Alaska because usually, and especially with what I showed on that diagram earlier, what happens in Alaska usually ends up either going into the northwest or ends up going through Canada and into the central part of the country where it can only go east from that point. And the thing to make note of here is over towards southern Alaska, we're expecting below average chances for temperatures here. So we could be seeing some a lot of cold air sneaking in from Alaska as we go further along here. Interesting thing to make note of as well is the above average probabilities towards the far northern reaches of the state here. So definitely kind of has the feel of an in-betweener type of month. So if you're going to be putting away your fall, putting away your uh, summer clothes. Wouldn't recommend that just yet. And if you're going to keep your fall clothes away, don't. Uh, I would say maybe take some of them out, not all of them. Not not like I'm a fashion expert, but I'm trying to keep you ahead of the game here. In any case, just like we saw that diagram earlier, above average chances of precipitation out towards the northwest, not really a surprise there. That's typical of a La Nina fall and a winter. So expect to see this probably in the winter outlook that we're going to be putting up in due time here. Over towards the northeast, pretty busy over there as well especially towards the far reaches of the northeast and then of course as we mentioned before fall outlook we're seeing those below average chances of precipitation over towards the western half of the u.s here and towards the south a bit more another thing that's interesting about this is we kind of do the inverse here and that's not quite surprising considering the fact that we're going to see a blocking high to the south of alaska 
which is going to a lot for below average precipitation over towards the southern and southeastern end of the state but up north though it's actually pretty busy there so a bit of a surprise in regards to that but we'll have to see how things ultimately develop as we go forward here i do think there's going to be some breaks in between here like i said it's not going to be a consistent jet stream like we saw in the diagram it is still very much variable so a couple of things we're going to take a look at here and this is going to be based off the month to month average once again this is not a week to week or day by day uh outlook here that we're looking at right now but some things that i'm making note of here is the oscillations we're going to be looking at over towards the us these are the most prevalent along with the enzo region so over here towards greenland we have an oscillation it's called the north atlantic oscillation or nao and then over towards the north pole is an oscillation it's called the arctic oscillation or ao so whenever you see the red areas positive that is um, going to be a positive phase over the region and then the blue ones a negative so right now we're kind of in a neutral phase and then as we get towards november we end up in a positive phase but it's interesting to note look at the cold air that's starting to sneak in from the backside over here and then eventually that as we get into december we can anticipate those cold snaps to increase in frequency as we go further along here so while like i said before this isn't showing exactly what we're going to be dealing with week after week i do expect some cold snaps to come in and become more and more prevalent as we get further along into the season here how this will ultimately affect what our precipitation looks like here's that diagram right here pretty dry right now i do think there are still some wild cards to be had over towards the southeast with the tropics in play but I do think tropical frequency will start to slow down as we get further along into October. It's typical usually anyway. And then as we get towards November, we start to have higher confidence and drier than average temp uh, or drier than average conditions over here. As we look over towards the Northwest, we start to see an increase in precipitation here. Towards the Northeast, we see an increase as well compared to what we were earlier over towards October. Just seems like a really quiet weather pattern tries to take shape as we start out fall here as we get towards december though look at how things quickly change here over a lot of the, the uh, u.s here as a whole whether you're west of the mississippi or east of it you're starting to see that above average probability of precipitation here and then out towards the west in particular really kind of catches my eye here I've been kind of leery as to whether or not we may see an atmospheric river develop. We've been seeing it over the last two years. It wouldn't surprise me if we get that. I'm hoping that isn't the case. I'm sure a lot of you over there are tired of that. But in any case, we're going to be keeping an eye on that, especially with this signal that we're seeing here. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to our temperatures here. And here's the thing to make note of. Just like we said before, October, I think, is going to be the driving force behind those above average temperature probabilities towards the west. Even though the greatest anomalies will be more over towards the northwestern states and north central states, as we continue to go forward, we see that consistency kind of remain over towards the southwest, especially as we get into December here. But just as we mentioned before, and this kind of backs up the theory that we had well, we're going to start to see more in the way of cold snaps maybe even polar vortex coming into play but i'm thinking that we'll end up seeing more and more cold snaps and in, in particular affecting the northern states warmer temperatures of course to the south it's going to be due in large part to the jet stream kind of staying a little bit further to the north could be a bit stormy over here too though so i am interested in what could lie ahead with severe weather potential as we go further along with this so we'll just kind of have to keep an eye on things. There have been uh, other YouTubers that have been making a severe weather and tornado forecast, and they're expecting a slightly above average fall in regards to severe weather. I do agree with them at this current point in time. But in any case, though, we're going to wrap this one up and just kind of watch this play out from this point. We'll have a winter outlook up probably within the next week or so, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And we're going to, of course, be covering any inclement weather that is on the way for the lower 48. Till then, you guys take care and have an awesome rest of your day, evening, wherever you are. 
Have an awesome rest of your day. It's Tyron Metal Weatherman signing out.